Hello everybody, my name is Track 94 and welcome back to the Let's Play world. Thank you very much for joining me today. How are you guys doing today? So, as you can see around here, I have been busy kind of improving the place. I have uh, been putting down a lot of flowers that I've collected from the flower forest nearby. And I'm definitely getting the really nice, uh, really getting used to the nice look of this place. I love flowers, as you can see, and I just love to spam them everywhere. So yeah, all over my base now is a combination of every flower in the game, and uh, all the tulips and all the different types of flowers from all the different uh, biomes and even sweet berry bushes there. So yeah, definitely like the look. Uh, my goal is to eventually kind of beautify my entire base, make it look like this with all the flowers, and then have the um, hidden pumpkin lighting there so I can get rid of those ugly torches that you can see over there. So um, One of the issues I actually ran into though was I kept running out of uh, pumpkins, carved pumpkins that is, to, um, to, to put the lighting into. So I think what I'm going to do today is actually make um, an interesting farm that will take care of that issue by uh, basically it just allows you to automatically carve pumpkins um, very quickly so I don't have to do it by hand all the time. Anyways, let's get some sleep here so that we can get rid of these stupid phantoms. So uh, anyways, I'm just going to jump into a creative world real quick so you guys can see um, what I have in mind and then I'll show you guys um, where I'm going to put it. I plan on putting it in the man cave but I'll show you guys what it's going to look like and everything and I'll walk you through the steps. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, creative world and I'll show you guys what we've got going on. Alright everybody, welcome to the creative world. Um, so as you can see before me, we have a few iterations of the design, but the final design is the one you see right here, kind of crammed in this little space here. And basically, it's an automatically harvesting um, pumpkin carving station, I guess you could call it. Um, so what you, basically what you do is you get yourself some pumpkins and some shears, and I like to put them in slots one and two. I get the pumpkins in my uh, first slot there, and I put my fingers over slots one and two so I can switch between them quickly. And then what I do is I jump into the minecart and immediately start placing pumpkins in these little spots right here. And then when you bounce back, you just start using your shears to carve the pumpkins. And then when you get back to the beginning, you just select your pumpkins again and repeat the process. And um, it kind of gets a little bit of getting used to to kind of get the rhythm going. But uh, once you figure it out, it's actually pretty easy. You just place and carve, place and carve, just over and over again like this. And then when you're done carving pumpkins, you just do one little once over here to collect all the pumpkins. And then on your way back, you just want to stay in the minecart until the very end. And then you just left shift to get out. And the minecart will set itself right there. And then when you come back next time, just jump in and do the same thing. And as you can see, it uh, works the same way every single time. Um, the reason why you have to wait to get out of the cart is because if you get out too early, then the uh, minecart will not go all the way back to the power rail like it should. I'll just give you a quick demonstration. So I'm going to get out too early. And as you can see, the cart, because it doesn't have me inside of it, it just slows down. And I'd have to like push it into the powered rail there. So um, Basically, the design of this farm is very simple. You just place the pumpkins you in the minecart and then carve them, collect them as you're placing the next ones. Um, and you can carve um, like 64 pumpkins in about, I would say, 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds. So obviously you could do, if you have a bunch of stacks of pumpkins in your inventory, you can carve a whole bunch. Um, thing to note is shears without enchantments, like unbreaking, um, only last for about four and three quarters of a stack of pumpkins. So you do go through shears pretty quickly. Um, definitely having an iron farm. Actually, no, that's that's wrong. It's actually three plus three quarters of a stack of pumpkins. Um, yeah, so you get three stacks of pumpkins, and then about three quarters of the way through the last stack of pumpkins, your shears will break. Um, but having an iron farm will be nice for that. You can just put a bunch of shears in your inventory. Um, and the redstone behind this is very simple. You just have, this is the block being powered by the tripwire. Um, this tripwire is what triggers the whole system. So when you get in the minecart, it triggers the tripwire activating these two lines of redstone. The one on the bottom just powers the powered rail right there. And then the second line of redstone here goes into this piston monostable circuit, which gives a short little two tick pulse. And that just pushes the pistons forward and backwards really quickly and uh, makes it so that when you activate the tripwire here, it just, uh, let's see if I can get to activate it with this block here. Uh, it looks like blocks don't activate it, but if I do it by hand, you can see the 
pistons get pushed like that, and of course the minecart will push off. And as you can see, it's a very simple design, but it works very well. Um, I can certainly make a tutorial of this uh, pumpkin carving machine if you guys want to. Just leave a few comments in the comments section saying, hey, make a tutorial, I really want to see how to make this. But um, I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, it would be a pretty short one, but definitely would be willing to share that with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump back into the Let's Play world and uh, see um, how I'm going to make this and uh, where I'm going to put it. Alright everybody, welcome back to the Let's Play world here. So I just wanted to give a quick update on something I've changed here as well. Um, before I had uh, basically, I forget what it's called, it's magma blocks or something like that, um, right here uh, where the campfires are, uh, which the monsters would fall on top of and then they would take any damage um, if they survived the fall. Um, the fall is so steep now that it's very rare that you'll get a monster that survives the fall, but sometimes you'll get like a random zombie or skeleton with feather falling on their boots, and then um, they'll, they'll kind of stick around for a little bit. But um, if they, yeah, so that guy had feather falling, but because there's campfire there, he'll just start taking incremental damage until he eventually dies. Um, witches um, instantly die and they don't wear armor, so I don't have to worry about them surviving. And uh, all the drops um, are collected by the hoppers underneath the campfire because the campfires are not full blocks. Um, if the campfires, um, let's say that instead of there being campfires and the magma blocks like we had before. Um, hoppers can't pick up items on top of full blocks, so um, there there would be a limitation there where I'd have to have like um, hopper minecarts you know, underneath the blocks to collect the items. Um, and that was causing a lot of lag because they're colliding with each other and uh, it was just very noisy. So I decided just to put up with the particles and the sound and just have campfires here temporarily. Um, ideally you'd have wither roses, uh, one in every block. Uh, wither roses produce very little particles and they don't make any sound, so they'd be the ideal thing to use, but obviously wither roses are hard to come by, so um, this does not lose any drops, like items on top of campfires don't get burned up, um, and everything goes into the hopper minecart, um, as I've shown you before, and goes down to the base below. So this is a good setup uh, if you guys want to set up a uh, mob system and has a killing area that uh, guarantees to kill all the monsters, you don't have anything um, sitting around that doesn't get killed. So, Anyways, let's go ahead and jump down to the man cave here and uh, take a look at where we're going to place all of the pumpkin harvesting system. As you can see over here, we have the sugarcane bamboo farm, pumpkin and melon farm behind us here. Um, I would like to put the pumpkin harvesting system um, at the end, right here, um, going in this direction. And the reason why I want to put it right here is because um, I'm like literally right next to the ocean here, so if I dig just too much, if I dig much farther in this direction, I'm eventually going to hit ocean. Um, so what I need to do is figure out how far I can go before I do hit the ocean, and then I want to put it at the very end of the hallway as kind of like a, a cap, I guess you could say. Um, and the cap will make it so I, I don't really build much more in this direction. I might, have, you know, be able to expand the pumpkin or the bamboo farm a little bit if I want to. But uh, most of my building um, from this point on will be in that direction. Um, and then obviously the storage system will continue to grow in this direction. And again, I don't plan on putting anything in this direction really because of um, the mob system being not too far um, from here. So I'll go ahead and start hollowing out the hallway here and just seeing where I'm going to put this. And then I'll give you guys an update once I have am ready to start building things. Alright you guys, so here we have before us the hallway. I went ahead and extended it all the way to the ocean here. And then I just made a little tunnel here so I can get in and out from the ocean. I thought that would be a little nifty way of getting back in. If I'm already on this side of the base over here next to the uh, potion shop, I can just drop down into the ocean here and uh, get into the uh, man cave here. But anyways, this is the beginning of the uh, pumpkin uh, carving station here. Basically, um, I have the tripwire hook set up to the monostable circuit, so you activate it, it activates that one piston right there, and that's pretty much the first block that you'd be placing the carved pumpkin on. Um, because this is so close to the ocean, I uh, had to have the redstone repeater going directly into this um, block above the uh, sticky piston, which is uh, right there behind this block. Um, means I'm going to have one last piston in the chain, so instead of 17 pistons, I'm only going to have 16, 
um, 16 spaces to put pumpkins into. Um, I don't really think that's such a big idea, big problem. Um, really what matters is that I just get, um, you know, a way of quickly carving pumpkins and having one less is not going to affect the rate too much. So anyway, so this is basically the layout of the farm here. Um, and then the doorway is going to be right here, like this. Basically, to get into the farm, I'm just going to walk through this tripwire hook. It's not going to trigger it. Um, carve out the area right here. And then I can just get into the minecart, which will be on top of a powered rail right here. And I just jump into the minecart, and then it'll immediately take off and start. I can start placing my pumpkins once I'm ready, and then I can escape through here. And then as I'm going along, um, I'll be having trap doors uh, preventing me from placing pumpkins um, into the little headspace. I'll, I'll explain more once I kind of build the rest of the farm. So I will go ahead and do a quick little, uh, I guess you could say, uh, two times speed of me building this farm here. And then um, when I get back, I'll show you guys uh, the whole thing in action, and then we'll move on to the next thing on the docket. So uh, go ahead and enjoy the uh, montage, and I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back everybody. So I have the farm working now. It's all tested and ready to go. I got plenty of shears here for the future. Let's go ahead and demonstrate it in use. So uh, one thing I wanted to note that I did not note when I was in the creative world was the fact that you really should have um, half slabs above your head um, when you're going down the minecart track here. And the reason why is because if you get out of the minecart, you don't want to hurt yourself or suffocate in the wall because it does put you in one block above the minecart. So like right here I have half slabs so that when I get out of the minecart, I don't take damage. Um, that's just something you might want to consider on your own. It's like I got stuck somehow. So if you ever get out, you just open up the trap door. But yeah, these are all um, half slabs right here. My pickaxe out. And I just did that so that the um, you don't take damage, you don't suffocate inside half slabs. So that should work just fine. And uh, make sure you have some shears on you. Um, extra ones, uh, again, when you get three to three and a, three plus three quarters of a stack of pumpkins um, is how many you can shear before they break. Um, so yeah, if you're going to shear a large <laughs> or carve large numbers of pumpkins, just keep that in mind. But yeah, the uh, pumpkin farm is, or sorry, the pumpkin carving machine is fully operational now and I can carve large amounts of pumpkins um, with ease. 
And uh, of course, you get tons and tons of pumpkin seeds from this too. So you could use those to feed your chickens, or just throw them on a cactus and destroy them if you don't want them. So, anyways, that's pretty much everything here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys what I have in store for you guys next. All right, guys. So now that we're done with the uh, pumpkin uh, machine, there, let's go ahead and head into the Nether. I'd like to show you guys something really cool um, that I've been working on off camera. Check it out, you guys. So, last time you guys saw the nether, this was just a little cobblestone house, but check it out. Oh yeah, it looks really awesome. I spent a good few hours um, just on my spare time just kind of working on the nether hub here, and I made something really beautiful. Um, basically, it's just a, a glass dome um, with uh, this little cobblestone, or sorry, these uh, stone blocks here kind of leading to the middle and I think it looks really nice it kind of reminds me of like a polka center or something like that um, but I also made some small tunnels here so we have a tunnel here going to the ice farm and it uses ice and uh, uh, trap doors to kind of help you run really fast and you can actually travel pretty quickly if I span the space bar here then I have one here that goes all the way to the desert where I can go to get sand if I need any and as you can see we're just cruising along really fast and then here we are at the nether portal. And then when I want to come back, I just eat a little bit of food, spam the space bar. And as you can see, it's really, really fast. And of course, I have a tunnel here um, going to the stronghold base here. I can uh, spam space bar. This one's a little bit longer, but it's actually pretty fun once you uh, kind of move along here. What I like to do is just kind of put my finger on the space bar and press it really fast. And then there's a diagonal section here too that you have to be a little careful about. And here we are at the stronghold. Um, these kind of ice pathways are really fast. In fact, they're faster than um, most forms of transportation with the exception of boats on ice. Um, but they are a really good way of traveling short distances really fast. And I actually like them. So for all of the tunnels that are going to short areas that were within proximity of the nether hub here, I'm going to use these little ice tunnels. Um, but anything that's like really far away, um, that's more than like a minute or two of travel. I'm probably just going to use a standard minecart rail um, so that I can hop in the minecart, shove off, um, and then I can AFK for a few minutes, and then when I get there, I can get out of the minecart. Uh, yeah, this is a very nice little nether hub. And then, of course, I upgraded the ladder that goes to the nether ceiling to a full-blown uh, minecart, um, like, clicky elevator. Um, this, again, this goes to the gold farm. So as you can see, you go really fast. I'm just traveling vertically very fast and then to get out you just jump into this minecart left shift here I am and then here is the ladder to the nether ceiling here and then I can take that and get to the gold farm as you can see I have a really fast way of getting around to these places now unfortunately I, I, I wanted to make the clicky elevator go all the way up to the top of that little spot right there unfortunately couldn't do that because um, it's hard to drill holes through the nether ceiling and um, the hole I drilled here was already kind of conveniently placed so I didn't want to bother with that anymore. And then to get back down you just jump into the little minecart thing and hold space bar and then there's a slime block here which will absorb all the fall, fall damage. And, um, you just hold space bar so that you jump up and down you don't have to worry about bouncing back up. Um, just make sure you don't press forward at all because if you press forward you might hit one of the trap doors but uh yeah uh, yeah so that's another hub right now um, everything is working very nicely and um, i can go anywhere i want very quickly so it's very nice to have this little nether hub here all right guys so the last thing i wanted to do today is to actually show you something i found while i was working on the ice farm not too long ago um believe it or not um I've, I've kind of been experimenting with the settings on my computer, trying to figure out the best way to do things, uh, try to get the best render distance. And in the process of increasing the render distance on my computer, I discovered something interesting. So let's go ahead and get rid of the skeleton here. And uh, check it out, you guys. I found a uh, woodland mansion way over here just by raising the render distance on my computer um, a little bit. I was able to find that. Um, before I was kind of had the render distance a little bit lower than I needed to, um, just so that I could perhaps get some better frames or whatever, but I've kind of been tweaking with my graphics card and trying to get the most out of it and everything. Long story short, 
I found this, and I just kind of wanted to explore that with you guys today um, as the last little thing we could do for this episode, and then um, we'll wrap it up. So let's go ahead and jump over here to the Woodland Mansion. I got a bunch of potions and everything, so uh, we're going to have a lot of fun um, just kind of exploring, and I've actually never explored a Woodland Mansion before in my life, so this will definitely be an interesting experience. I'll we'll see if we can find any um, you know, pillagers and vindicators, probably not pillagers, but vindicators and um, evokers, all those fancy um, hostile mobs there. Um, yeah, we'll see what kind of loot we get too. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and set up a small little base over here um, next to the river so that if I die, I can um, come back here or I can sleep at nighttime if I need to. So I'll just put down a bed and a chest and that way if I die or I get too much stuff I can just dump my stuff in here I'm going to put some extra torches here um, the reason why I brought all these torches is because it can be a little dark inside there too so let's go ahead and jump inside this woodland mansion see if we can find the front entrance or something and uh, I'll probably chug a strength potion once we start seeing mobs yeah I definitely hear some mobs inside there so looks like this is the entrance right here Interesting. I've never been inside of a woodland mansion like this before. It's surprisingly unoccupied. I, I've, I'm surprised by how few mobs are actually in here. I thought there would be more um, bad guys in here, but I guess not. It's kind of got the, the feeling of like a stronghold or something. Um, almost like, a, like how a stronghold kind of generates in a weird way. Interesting. They might be on the second story. It sounds like we got, might have some guys here in the second story. Interesting. We have some kind of chest here. I don't trust it. It might be a trap chest, so I'm going to dig around it real quick. Interesting. No, it's just a regular chest. We got a golden apple and some interesting items here. We'll take the iron ingots. The rest of the stuff can stick around here. Interesting. We've got some. So kind of like gardening area here. This part leads to another flower area. So if I ever need flowers, I could always come back here, I guess. I'm gonna see if I can get onto the second story here, and you might be able to find some more action up there. Cause it seems kind of quiet down here. Okay, let's head to the second story here. I have explored the right side of the lower story. Here we got the windows going out. I got a creeper. I'll take care of you with a little shot of my bow. I don't have to deal with you. Or I can just do that instead, I guess. Okay, looks like we have our first, uh, this looks like a Vindicator right here. Now, those guys do hit pretty hard. Got another one here. Yeah, these guys do hit pretty hard. I'm going to need to chug a Strength Potion so I can knock these guys out a little bit more easily. If I need another one, I got that. I got a regen potion just in case. Those guys do hit pretty hard, though, that's for sure. Even with my diamond armor here, my god armor, <laughs> it doesn't matter. These guys still hit. Interesting, so we have some kind of like cat inside of here. I've never seen a cat like this before. Almost like a cat statue. I wonder if this is like an Easter egg of some sort. Yeah, you can see like the rear end of the cat and everything. I wonder if like Jeb put this in his game to like celebrate his cat or something like that. It's kind of funny. I'll have to take a look in the wiki and see how rare it is to find one of those rooms. Here we got some action in there. Some kind of meeting room here. Alright, let's take care of you. Love my bow, it's super powerful. You can sometimes one hit kill these guys. Pro tip if a creeper is about to explode, get behind an object. If you break line of sight with a creeper, they won't explode. We got another wire right here. There we go. And then try to get those critical hits by jumping. And then if you hit the creeper while you're jumping, then um, the crit will get more damage. This looks like some kind of fighting arena. I've never seen one of these before. This is really cool. 
definitely good uh, for getting some fighting going in right now. <laughs> oh, looks like we got a chest. Ooh, a diamond hoe! That's the find of the day right there. <laughs> and some bones, sure, why not? I could always use bones. Let's see. Uh, a fake bed. It's not a real bed, it's a bed, but it's not a bed. Uh, interesting. Yeah, some more fake beds over here. It's interesting how uh, Mo Yang put um, fake beds into here, but they didn't use real beds. It, it, it's kind of confusing to me, but uh, I guess evokers and uh, uh, vindicators don't like to use real beds. They just like to use fake beds because they don't actually get any sleep. Let's go over here to the other side of the woodland mansion here. To be honest, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more danger, but I'm not really finding a lot around here. It might get a little bit more dangerous when it becomes nighttime, because then mobs will spawn more in the darkness here. Let's see. Actually, it should probably become less dangerous, because less mobs would spawn. They'd all be spawning outside. There's not much around here, really. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised. I thought there would be a lot more. I hear monsters, but I don't know where they're at. Oh, got a creeper right here. Thought you could sneak up on me, huh? He's probably on that upper ledge right there. Let's see if I can uh, ender pearl up there to to uh, get rid of the light up here. I want to light everything up around here just so that if I come back to get stuff, I don't get jumped by a creeper or something. And yes, even with diamond armor, creepers can still almost pretty much kill you. You have to have a blast protection really to survive creeper explosions at super close range. Okay, I don't see any more danger up here, so let's uh, take a look around here. Let's chug another speed potion here. That way I can get away quickly if I need to. I got a golden apple just in case. Alright, let's take it slow. Hear lots of mobs. Interesting, looks like some, some kind of bug right here. Like missing blocks. Oh, we got another cat statue here. That's cool. It's two cat statues inside one um, place here. Oh, there you are. Aha! He was hiding on the little ledge there, just like that creeper before me. Alright, so this looks like this is the last of the upper level here. I'm kind of surprised I haven't found more um, hostile mobs here. This has been kind of <laughs> uneventful, I guess. I haven't really found any bad guys or anything. Kind of disappointed, really. I thought the um, Woodland Mansion would be a little bit more of a challenge, but I guess uh, this is more meant for people with, like, iron armor and no potions at all or whatever. It's kind of a challenge, though, I guess, if I was to get, like, double teamed by a bunch of Vindicators and Evokers. Looks like there's one area I haven't explored yet here to my left. Let's see if I can head back down and find out where that area is. Okay, so this is the last spot that I have not explored yet. This is the uh, first floor once again, um, and it has some mobs here. I actually am going to go um, sleep and grab some more torches, and I'll be right back. Alright, so we got some... Now that it's daytime, it'll be a little bit harder for me, because there's going to be more mobs spawning inside here, like this creeper right here, which I'm going to kill with my bow so I don't have to do sword combat. Oh, and he's got a friend in there, too. There you are. Another one in here? No. And then, for some reason, there's a room here just full of wool. I wonder where all this wool has come from. Some kind of storage of wool. I'm not sure it's supposed to be signatory of. I guess it's cloth of some sort. Ah, mushroom growing room. I hear lots of monsters in the wall here. There might be some around the corner. Let's see what's in this chest. Nothing at all. Interesting. Okay. Ah, and we have another one of those maze things. Here it is. Name tag, some redstone is always nice, gunpowder. And the rest of the stuff's not really important to me. Let's get rid of this Vindicator here. Hey, we found the storage room! 
Now this is the find right here. No wonder he was protecting it. This is all the good loots in here. I'll go through and uh, go through all these chests. Now they're probably all empty. Yeah, I thought there would be good stuff in here, but apparently not. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through all those chests um, off camera and I'll show you guys all the loot. Oh, what do we have here? Jail cells. Anybody in these cells? what they would put in the jail cells. Probably villagers? Would villagers be found in here, I wonder? Looks like they're empty. Oh, we got a creeper in there. Let's get rid of this creeper, shall we? God, here he comes. There we go. Take him out that way, I guess. A little more dangerous, but I guess you have to live on the wild side if you're going to explore um, woodland mansions like this. Yeah, is that everything, really? Let's see if there's any uh, stuff over here. Got another dance floor. And a little growing area for trees. Interesting. I guess this is where they get all the wood for the woodland mansion. And some dark oak saplings. Nice. Take those home with me. Very interesting. And come back later, I guess, and uh, explore that. Oh, we got a chest right here. I didn't notice that. I'll have to go back and check. Yeah, look at this out. Redstone, gunpowder. I already have all this stuff. Take that. I'm going to try mining into the walls here and seeing if I can find more monsters here. Yeah, here they are. Come on over. There you go. Any more guys in there? Interesting. It's like a little secret area back here. It's got a tree inside here. I guess the the way to this farm was blocked off by something. Ah, oh, here it is. Yeah, this is where it was. I guess it was blocking it off. Interesting. I didn't know that you could have blocked off rooms like this. Yeah, here's a little tree. And what do we have in here? Efficiency one axe. You can you can keep your axe. <laughs> And then, okay, I'm going to go through now and just um, off-camera double-check and make sure I didn't miss any loot here. And then I'll get back to you guys and share what I found. Alright, everybody. So I went ahead and went through the entire Woodland Mansion here. And I have pretty much picked out all the loot. I even took a look on the wiki. Turns out there are tons of different types of rooms um, inside the Woodland Mansion. The number I found were actually just a small slice of them. But uh, yeah, I found all the loot there is inside, but I also found a Vindicator who spawned outside of the Woodland Mansion here. So I went ahead and trapped him. I'm actually going to keep him here um, for when I need him in the future. I actually have an idea of what I can do with him. You can see there he is right there. Um, it's a good thing I double-checked though because I found two more name tags in the process. So I can maybe name him Johnny and use him for like a special passive mob farm of some sort. So. That'd be pretty cool. I might have him like in a slime farm. That'd be interesting. But uh, yeah, here take, here's the loot, uh, the loot I got. Golden apples, some emeralds, a record. Uh, name tags are the biggest find. And of course, the all-time biggest find was this diamond hoe, which I'm going to go home and I'm going to name it the diamond hoe. No, actually, I'm going to name it Yo Mama because yeah, that's that running joke is so old and I really need to... Anyways, <laughs> um... We also have all of these redstone here. and I don't know. I'm just kind of not really impressed. I thought this would be a lot harder and get more loot, but not really. But anyways, um, I'm going to head back home and uh, take all the loot with me. And uh, that pretty much sums up the episode, you guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you guys really like this comment, this kind of content, um, consider subscribing to my channel. Or just leaving a like on the video is also nice, too. Um, I'm always looking for ideas. If you guys have any ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments section or suggestions. Anything like that is always appreciated. So, uh, yeah, and without further ado, thank you guys very much for watching this episode, and uh, yeah, take it easy, everybody.